friends, welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm a few minutes behind getting started today because I did this live um, on Facebook and I was troubleshooting. Um, so I think you guys are gonna get the better demo today because um, even though we're doing a really cool art project, I had an add-on project to it and um, I had some issues with it. So I figured out what was wrong and when I present it to you guys, you're gonna have the fully troubleshooted version. So thanks for um, bearing with me while I uh, took a little bit of extra time today. Usually I'm on here around 1.30 and I know it's a few minutes after that today. In any case, welcome. Today we are going to be doing a really fun, classic, classic art project. And then I'm gonna show you how to use this art project to conduct electricity and hopefully for you guys, it will work. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys, I wanted to, um, if you're not on my email list, you probably didn't get any of these materials. Um, if you are on my email list, I sent out a materials list this morning, but I will talk about the materials you're gonna need for today's project right now. So kids, if your parents are here, you can go tell them to go grab some of these uh, materials, please. And then you can do the project alongside me today. So we're gonna be doing a classic project called Raised Salt Art. We're going to, for this project, you're going to of course need salt. I mean, that's a given. If it's called salt art, you're going to need salt. Um, we're gonna need glue. So grab a bottle of glue. Make sure it's one that you can squeeze fairly easily, that it's not clogged up or anything. You're also gonna need some paper. So you can use colored paper, you can use white paper. I actually think this project looks really awesome on colored paper. So if you have some, um, go ahead and choose that. But if you just have white paper, that's fine too, it'll work. You will also need some paint brushes. If you don't have paint brushes, you can use pipettes. I don't know if you have those, these are awesome. If you don't have either of those, you can also use a straw. I have a little uh, part of a straw cut here. And then lastly, you're gonna need some little cups that filled with a, a little bit of water and food coloring so that you have some, basically some homemade liquid water colors. Uh, I'm gonna turn my camera around in a second. Just wanna mention that we have a lot of activity in our neighborhood today so you might hear some um, gardening noises it sounds like they're cutting the bushes I live near a river it sounds like they're cutting bushes on that side of the river all right I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around so you guys can see what we're doing all right let me get started here all right so we're making raised salt art so what I want you to do is grab let's grab your piece of paper so I have all my um, my paints mixed already. Uh, parents, if you're nearby, if you wouldn't mind maybe mixing up some paint. Basically, like I said, you wanna put, for this project, we wanna have a, a very good concentration of color. So just put a little bit of water in a small cup. You don't need a lot. And then put a good squeeze of food coloring or liquid water colors if you have those in your cup. And then, Grab a tray as well. I didn't mention that, but in part of this project, we're going to be using salt and then we're gonna be dumping the salt off of our drawing. So having a tray to contain that and to be able to reuse the salt is great. I also have my salt already placed in a cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more to that. That way, um, when we do the salt part, you've got that ready. All right, I think we're ready to get started now. Um, let me put this here. All right. So now I'm gonna take my school glue and we're basically, you guys, we're gonna try to, we're gonna draw a picture using glue, okay? So for this one, I'm gonna make sure it's all unclogged and it is, and I'm just gonna start drawing. And you don't have to get, there's no right or wrong to this. This is really an abstract style drawing. So just use, you know, keep your glue a little bit above the paper and draw lines with the glue, like so. You can also add dots if you want. 
They, I did that before and they look pretty cool. Okay. Adds another layer. I'm gonna add a little bit more. There we go. A few more crossing lines. All right, cool. When you have that, the next thing you're going to do, you guys, is grab your salt. That's why I you could you could open this up and gently spray it or you know sprinkle it on top. Um, these are pretty heavy, so if that's too much. You can just simply take it in a cup. You can sprinkle it with your hands like that, or you can just kind of shake it. Shake it all over your artwork. And what you really are looking to do is to cover the glue in salt, okay? And we're going to, it's okay if the salt is um, all over your page because we're gonna save it. We're gonna dump, we're gonna, kind of tilt our drawing in a second and any of the salt that is not sticking to glue, we're gonna basically capture in our tray and we'll be able to reuse it. Okay, but what, the one thing I do wanna make sure you do is to cover all that glue with a good layer of salt, okay? All right, perfect. Um, now, we don't want all that salt on here when we do the next part, so we're going to Gently tilt this to the side, shake it very lightly. You see I have all my salt kind of left, all the salt that actually stuck to the glue is here and all the leftover salt is on my tray. I'm gonna gently move this to the side for a second, tilt my tray. Parents, you might wanna help with this because that's a little bit just to you know, contain it. I basically took all the salt that was on my tray and I put it back in the cup. Now I'm gonna take my drawing back, put it right there for you guys. And now we get to the fun part, the kind of magical part. Um, so I have my colors already pre-mixed. I've got my primary colors here. And what I wanna mention that you guys do is make sure, I'm gonna use some new uh, brushes here. Make sure that you grab a paintbrush for each of the colors you're using. Since I did this before, I've got a lot of color starting to mix on my tray, so I'm just gonna take that to absorb. There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, if you're using a paintbrush, this is the technique, and then I'll show you guys how to do the same thing with um, pipettes and with the straw if you don't have either of either a paintbrush or a pipette. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our paintbrushes, we're gonna dip it into our paint and we want to get it really coated really saturated and then you're going to sort of gently hold it above your drawing and all the drops will flow out of the brush and onto the salt you don't actually want to like press down on the salt you just want to get um this the the paint to sort of flow out of the tip of your brush doesn't that look cool and then you can switch colors so again, use a, if you use a separate brush, then you won't accidentally start muddying up your paints. Um, now, if you guys have followed me for a while, you know how much I love color mixing. I love adding color mixing and a color mixing aspect to all of my projects if I can. So I am definitely overlapping some of the primary colors here to get greens, which I didn't mix. I only have the primaries here which are red, yellow, and uh, blue. Whoops, I double dipped. I always do that. It's like habit, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add the red in a minute, but I'm just gonna color my lines there. For the red, I'll show you. If you're using a pipette, these are my preferred tool for this because you basically suck up the um, color and then you can apply it and it's so nice. It's so cool, it just flows right out of there. Um, so if you have one of, if you have pipettes available, use those. And there we go. I just really like, so basically the salt and the, the glue are really absorbing all this color and it kind of starts flowing along the lines, which is why this is so, such a beautiful project. Again, the pipette makes it really obvious when it starts flowing. So that's why these are fun to use. Let me show you another trick. This is kind of an art hack if you don't have pipettes. You can simply cut a piece of a straw. And what you're gonna do is, 
you're going to dip your straw into your um, color, into your watercolor, your food coloring paint, and you're gonna put your finger over the top, your fingertip over the top, then you're gonna lift it out, and what you have here is a little bit of paint in the tip of the straw that you can then drop onto your painting, onto your drawing, I mean. Now this requires a little bit because it comes out kind of like a little bit fast. You have to be a careful when you do this so that you're not dropping blobs of, of paint onto your drawing. But this is a great little art hack if you ever, if you don't have pipettes and you would love to kind of mimic the way they work. Cool, right? Let me use, I'm gonna go ahead and back, go back to my pipettes for a second here. There we go. And basically our goal right now is just to fill up our color, you know, fill up our paint, our um, salt with color. Make this as colorful as possible. It's a really pretty day here, by the way. I hear the birds chirping and it's such a great mood lifter. After all of the stuff that we're all dealing with right now, it's so nice to just kind of be outside. So highly recommend if it's a good day where you, beautiful day where you are, go ahead and go outside. Um, if you have pipettes, the other cool thing about them is that you can also use them to suck up excess water or paint, which I like. So that's, if you guys, if <laughs> basically what I'm saying is on your next Amazon order, add pipettes to your order. They're like five bucks for like 500 of them and they always have good uses in art projects. And there you have it, isn't that cool? All right, so I am gonna show you what didn't work in my last um, demo on Facebook, but I hope it works for you guys. Um, I wanna show you how you can use the same idea to conduct electricity. So let me swap out trays. And this idea is in my book. My book is called, I wrote a couple of books, um, but the one that I have on Amazon is called Steam Play and Learn. Um, I wrote this book a couple years ago and actually in a couple weeks, we're gonna be doing just projects from this book. But they're basically Steam projects featuring really easy to find materials. And this, this project is called Salty Circuits. It's in the book. Uh, I also want to mention a resource, by the way, well, before we get started on this part. I co-authored a number of the STEAM Kids books. We have a whole series of these, and they were put together by myself and a bunch of bloggers. Um, Ann Carey of Left Brain Craft Brain was the mastermind behind this. So we actually, this week only, because one of the books is called STEAM Kids in the Kitchen, not this one, but the second follow-up book is called that. Um, and since we're doing a kitchen theme, I asked Anne if we could offer you guys a coupon. So if you are interested, if, if you love this theme, you can go ahead and hop over. Um, I'll put some links down below in the description. And we have a 50% off coupon this week only. And it's the uh, discount code is KITCHENBDD. Um, and that'll get you 50% off that book or any of the other STEAM Kids books, if that's something that you're interested in. I know a lot of people keep emailing me for like resource guides and I'm like, well, these books, we did these books, they're great. So um, those would be, they could be really helpful right now. All right, so let me show you how the salty circuits works. So it's the same idea as the raised salt art, only you'll notice, let me explain how a circuit works really quick. So a circuit, an electrical circuit works by when you have a power source and you use that power source to power something. So in this case, I'm gonna unhook these. I am going to, this is a battery pack, and I'm going to use this battery pack to power an LED, okay? This is an LED. And I'm gonna basically turn this on. Uh, I'm gonna see if it works. And we're making a circuit in this case. So the circuit is, Whoops, there it is. It's a little hard to see because I'm in the bright sunlight. I'm gonna turn my lights off. It might be a little easier to see. All right, so let's show you here. 
This is going to be a hard one to see. <laughs> but basically, okay, I've got an electrical circuit here when I connect my battery pack and my wires to something that needs power, in this case, an LED. A kind of fun thing you can do with raised salt art is because salt and water conduct electricity, you can use them as your wires, in a sense. Um, so, let me show you, I hope this works, even if it, it, it may work and it may be really hard to see because it's so bright in here, but the idea is that instead of me connecting these directly to the LED, I am going to connect them to alligator clips and these clips are basically attached to a paper clip on the bottom of my paper. Um, and at, I'm gonna move this closer so you can see. And paper clips are made out of metal so they conduct electricity. So basically now I'm feeding power from my battery pack to this paper clip. And what I want to try to do is to use the salty water to conduct electricity. And I'm going to place my LED right in the middle of this. Okay, so let me try this. Now, what happened with me, what happened earlier was that there's a voltage drop over, basically when electrons move through a circuit, um, they sometimes lose voltage. And because we're doing this very kind of unusual circuit with salt and water, they definitely lose a lot of voltage. So even though this battery pack has about six volts coming out, no, actually three volts, sorry. Um, by the time it travels through here, you're probably not gonna have that many volts. And so it was, basically I was using a really high powered LED in my last demo and it was not turning on. But let me add a little bit more salt here and water and kind of juice this up. So again, salt and water conduct electricity really well. So we're gonna use that scientific fact to see if we can use them to be kind of wires. And let me get some of the excess there. And so let me add a little bit of water here. In this case, the water is our watercolor. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm a little worried about this side because in this, in this project, the minute you start directing those electrons and they don't know where to go, if you start having a really um, wiggly line, it could be a problem. But let's try this. Where did my LED go? Here it is. So essentially now I'm gonna, I've got my LED and I'm gonna put it in between here. And that's, of course, <laughs> it was working earlier. Oh, I'm having a troubleshooting day. Oh, this is a troubleshooting day. Well, it was working earlier for me. Um, essentially the idea is that I think I got way too much of a voltage drop today. But basically, your, um, basically your LED, it's too bad this isn't working because it's really fun. Um, the electrons will travel through here, go, go through the salty water and then power the LED. I'm going to try for a second to see if I can get it to work, but I don't want to belabor it because I, electronics is one of those finicky things and I have done enough electronics projects over the years to know that it can take anywhere from a minute to an hour to troubleshoot sometimes, just depending on how tricky your project is. I have a feeling my problem is in this area. But the other thing we can do is actually, let's see, let's try one more time here. I've got water, I've got salt, I've got the LED in the right direction. Let me make sure there's two sides to an LED. There's a long leg and a short leg. The long leg has to be connected to the positive side and the short leg to the negative side. Nope, not getting it today. I guess this is not my electronics day. I will, um, 
I know that that earlier my problem was the voltage drop, so I have a feeling that's what's going on right now, but I'm not gonna belabor it. Uh, this is kind of a fun project. It's obviously not always without some troubleshooting involved. I will try to troubleshoot this and let you know what the problem was tomorrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn around my camera. All right, you guys. Whew. Okay, that's, that's zero for two. <laughs> But that's okay. I always tell my students in class that um, we love mistakes because mistakes means you're learning something. I have learned so much about electronics over the years just by troubleshooting it um, a, a lot. So I will go ahead and figure out what the issue was, was with this one. In any case, thanks for joining me today. I will be back tomorrow with another Kitchen Steam project. And again, I'm going to put some links below to the books that I mentioned, to my email list so you can get on there. Um, and I hope to see you back tomorrow, you guys. All right, take care.